Hello everyone, my name is Pedro Oliveira, I'm a cardiologist with Virtual Veterinary Specialists and in this short webinar uh, I'd like to discuss what to do uh, when faced with a cat with congestive heart failure. Now cats with congestive heart failure uh, often present with pleural effusion. Uh, this is a, an ultrasound image of a cat with pleural effusion. All of this is effusion, this is the heart in the middle, or uh, same with uh, chest x-ray. Uh, so cats often present with this or pulmonary edema. This is the typical appearance on a chest x-ray of pulmonary edema distribution in a cat with the right accessory lung lobe being more affected and then other areas of the lungs. So seeing this plus an enlarged heart, cardiomegaly, is very suggestive of congestive heart failure. But of course, unfortunately, we um, cannot do those tests when we have a patient like this open mouth breathing, very uh, stressed and, and struggling. If we try to manipulate this cat, even just to sometimes to listen to the heart and check the heart rate and pulse pressures, uh, that may be the tipping point for that cat to, to become worse and even die. Unfortunately, I have seen that happen. So we need to, at least at first, we need to base ourselves on history and the breathing pattern to see if that fits with congestive heart failure or if we're dealing with something else, asthma, another problem. Uh, we have another webinar on distinguishing breathing patterns that I would encourage you to have a look at uh, to help with this part of the examination. And of course, history. Is there a history of heart problems, uh, heart murmur detected in the past, uh, uh, and so on? Okay. In terms of the breathing pattern, with because cats often present with pleural effusion, that helps us because the breathing pattern for pleural effusion is quite characteristic. You see this patient is having trouble expanding the lungs, okay, because there's fluid impeding that. So when the chest expands, it's a quite a, 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 a deep movement and the uh, abdomen is contracting at the same time as the chest is expanding. So that means he's using abdominal muscles in the, in the diaphragm with accessory muscles to help expand the chest because there's restriction. That could be fluid, could also be a mass. Okay. Um, of course, that plus a heart murmur plus a fast heart rate, which we would expect with congestive heart failure. If you see a normal heart rate or low, then that may mean that there's something else going on. So my typical plan with a cat with congestive heart failure, pleural effusion, pulmonary edema, or both, also don't forget that they often have both. Uh, so when you can actually perform an x-ray, you should always do it, even if you've identified pleural effusion and drained it, okay, to see if there's pulmonary edema and how much. Also, sometimes we have surprises. I have had patients with congestive heart failure that I've treated without taking any x-rays and then taking an x-ray on the following day notice there's also cancer in the lungs. So on admission oxygen and rest that's very important we don't want to stress these patients they're very fragile we need to put them in a quiet place let them rest put a towel on the cage if necessary turn off the lights uh, um, whatever is necessary to keep them quiet. Sedation is fine if necessary. I normally use either butophenol 0.3 milligrams per kilogram, IM, IV preferably but we don't have an IV straight away, uh, or uh, methadone for example 0.2 milligrams per kilogram. Um, if necessary you can give some midazolam as well. I uh, sometimes see with midazolam that it can make them a little bit twitchy. Um, so uh, if Butophenol and just keeping the environment very as quiet as possible is enough. I tend to prefer that. Um, if you need some sedation to perform procedures, alfaxalon would be a good choice. Even alfaxalon IM gives you about 5-10 minutes to place an IV catheter and take some blood. Okay. Furosemide, um, I normally the first injection is given IM until you have an IV in place. And in that case, I would give 2 milligrams per kilogram. If uh, I'm giving IV administration, then I use 1 milligram per kilogram. 
uh, IV furosemide will cause vasodilation uh, which can be quite pronounced so if you use high dosages you may cause hypotension okay as soon as possible I'd like to have some blood to check PCV or hematocrits and total protein urea creatinine and electrolytes and this is very important we need to make sure we know if kidney function is appropriate and also furosemide and everything that we will do may change that may cause azotemia may cause hypokalemia so we need to monitor this we need to have a baseline and then monitor fluid drainage if necessary so if there's a lot of pleural effusion you need to physically drain it so that the patient can be stable I have seen many cats that uh, come in with respiratory issues the problem was identified they were started on oral fu on, on IV furosemide and then oral but they never really become stable so after a few days they're still unwell and that's because they had so much fluid in their chest and furosemide gets rid of it so slowly in some cases that actually those cases need to be drained and then after you drain them and start the uh, oral medication or intravenous to start with then they're fine okay uh, a brief heart scan is important as soon as possible because we want to know uh, first that we're doing the right thing and there is significant underlying heart disease and congestive heart failure and also we want to identify any potential problems for example this is a cat with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy you see the left ventricle and the right ventricle are very thick has an enlarged left atrium of course this comes from experience so you, you preferably you need to measure it to confirm but by eyeballing it I can tell you that it is enlarged and also there's pleural effusion okay now could this be pericardial effusion no I see the pericardium this is this this white line here you can actually see a tiny little bit of fluid inside you see here okay uh, so this is pleural effusion on both sides of the chest you also see some material outside again you see the pericardium with a little bit of fluid inside sometimes there and you can see some lung here you see this is the surface of the lung with air and it's moving there with a the pleural effusion okay now this may not be enough to warrant draining it really depends on how this cat is breathing something else that I want to know is is there significant left or right outflow tract obstruction that because the heart rate is so high because of the heart failure will this be a problem in terms of cardiac output will I have low perfusion of the kidneys and azotemia as a consequence okay so I want to know that that sort of case I will try to be a bit more conservative with the furosemide uh, use lower dosages spread apart uh, so that I avoid uh, doing that I don't like giving fluids to patients in heart failure okay even when there's kidney uh, uh, problems because it's counterproductive you're trying to get rid of fluid by forcing the kidneys to get uh, to excrete fluid and at the same time you're giving fluid intravenously okay um, but that's arguable some people do very low dosage uh, 0 0.45 percent uh, sodium chloride for example I, I don't uh, uh, like doing that something else I want to know if systolic function is appropriate or not for example this is a cat with a thickened muscle but dilated as well and the muscle is not moving very much and you can also see it has a huge left atrium and oracle this is quite a poorly cat unfortunately uh, so here there's risk of arrhythmias risk of sudden death risk of rupture of the atrium and also because the systolic function is so poor there's risk of uh, hypotension poor kidney perfusion so again another case that we need to be careful we may need to give something to support the myocardial function pimobendin for example um, and uh, um, prognosis is a little bit worse this is where the heart scan fits in you may not be able to do a full scan straight away uh, but we should as soon as possible arrange for a scan and we uh, if we can help you with that we will be able to get a, a lot of information from this that will be helpful to treat the patient um, okay something else enlarged 
left atrium in large left oracle but for example here there's a clot this is the left oracle and there's something inside you see moving now you don't always see it in this view okay you sometimes have to go on the left side of the heart uh, of the chest and check the oracle uh, itself so again something that a cardiologist can guide you and hopefully with experience you will learn and know how to do this yourselves it's also something you need to check because you need to know whether there's risk of thromboembolism and whether we should be doing something about it or not so monitoring I like to monitor respiratory rate every hour from outside of the cage I don't want to stress the patient uh, when I'm happy that the uh, things seem uh, better or stable or, or the breathing rate is coming down then every two to four hours I normally don't do it less often than every four hours until they're breathing normally because I want to know if anything changes and they start getting worse again we need to know that that's happening um, heart rate every four hours if possible if they're stable enough or continuous ECG especially if we have arrhythmias hypertension uh, that we want to uh, um, to keep an eye on heart rate and, and or we're giving some drugs to control heart rate of course that's a source of stress so if that's going to actually make the patient more uh, stressful stressed and uh, worsen the breathing rate then I, I would just won't do it sometimes we can only do what we can okay um, make sure you check that his or her are uh, producing urine so peeing we would expect urination after about half an hour uh, to an hour after furosemide now often cats will not do it uh, in hospital um, but we would expect it they will do it eventually they can hold it but we need to make sure if a cat does not urinate for several hours uh, receiving furosemide you need to palpate his abdomen to see if the urine is uh, if the bladder is uh, filling or uh, ultrasound because otherwise we may have problems with kidney function blood pressure if possible I find that this is uh, often stressful so I tend not to do it if in that case but if possible uh, um, even placing the uh, cuff in the tail if that's less stressful with the oscillometric method so you're not with the Doppler there touching the tail and looking for the uh, uh, pulse and making noise um, and this ideally should be done because we want to know if there's hypotension and we want to avoid it uh, um, and improve renal perfusion a as much as possible and then after 24 hours we need to check uh, urea creatinine electrolytes again uh, to make sure we haven't caused a lot of azotemia or hypokalemia that we need to uh, correct in terms of ongoing treatments after the first administration uh, hopefully we will have placed an IV even with the help of a little bit of sedation if necessary um, and uh, I normally give furosemide 1 milligram per kilogram IV if I have an IV uh, every 1 to 2 hours initially so normally I give initial dosage an hour later 1 depending on what's happened in that hour because a lot of cases come in so stressed that actually seem worse than what they really are so so often the breathing rate comes down quite significantly straight away or if it's a cat with pleural effusion that I have drained then this plan changes because the breathing rate might be a lot better um, so normally after that I either give uh, another uh, one milligram per kilogram bolus at uh, so a third administration an hour apart from the second one or I go straight away to every two hours for uh, around four to six hours and then if I see that the breathing rate is coming down I go to every eight hours for one or two days sometimes I even send the patient home uh, with um, that dosage for two to three days and then uh, uh, two milligrams per kilogram twice a day orally so when I'm using oral dosage I use two milligrams per kilogram if I'm using IV I use one milligram per kilogram boluses okay so once the, the cat is stable I add an ACE inhibitor I don't use it during the emergency setting unless they're already on the ACE inhibitor and they are stable enough to have oral medication okay um, I if they're not on it I don't start it because it may worsen azotemia 
and reduce the effectiveness of the furosemide a little bit. Some people use it because there's evidence that it can lower the pressure inside the left atrium. Uh, so some cardiologists argue that we should be using it. I don't for these reasons. Pimobendan if systolic dysfunction. Now, a lot of people nowadays use pimobendan in cats with heart problems. Uh, the truth is we have little information whether that's the right choice or not. The information we have tells us that even though uh, on the literature it says that hypertrophy or obstructive uh, disease is a contraindication for use with uh, pimobendan, information we have is that it has been used in a good number of cats without problems so it seems safe in other words but it's not licensed and we don't have evidence to say that pimobendan actually changes things makes those cats live longer and stay for a, a prolonged period of time uh, without heart failure but if you have evidence of systolic dysfunction and that's what I do then pimobendan makes sense there is uh, a reason to do it Okay. Water should always be available. This is very important. Uh, we don't want them to be thirsty and uncomfortable, and we want them to have water and be as hydrated as possible because we are dehydrating them a lot with the furosemide. This is very important for any patient with on furosemide. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, please let us know if you would like any help uh, managing your patients with heart failure. Um, we will also have additional webinars on managing feline cardiac emergencies that you might like to have a look at. Thank you.